네, 그러면 뭐 시작할까요? 네, 이 과목을 네 번째 이제 가르치는데 네, 되게 요번 1학년은 좀 뭔가 조용한 것 같네요. 서로도 별로 좀 친할 기회가 없었나. 네, 그래서 <웃음> 나는 지금 요 이제 전산수학 원요 과목 그리고 요거가 이제 어떤 내용을 배우냐면 요 리니어지브라라는 과목을 이제 배우고 네요 과목을 가르치게 된 이제 주제걸 교수라고 하고요 일단 요 과목은 이제 영어 강의예요 그래서 네 아마도 이제 그 랜덤하게 뭔가 배정이 됐을 걸로 알고 있는데 그 이게 분반이 아마 두 개가 더 열리나 그럴 거예요 아마 그래서 네. 혹시 저기 영강보다 이제 국강을 더 선호하면 아마 다른 쪽으로 이제 그 정정 기간 때 이제 변경도 아마 가능하지 않을까 싶고 이제 다른 쪽에 또 랜덤하게 또뭐 외국인 학생이나 혹은 뭐 영어 강의를 더 선호하는 학생들이 있으면 이제 네, 이쪽으로 또 아, 옮길 수 있도록 이야기를 또 해주면 좋을 것 같고요. 네. 그래서 <웃음> Okay, so I'll speak in English from now on. 그래서 here's my brief intro. Okay, so I'm an assistant professor in computer science department, and I did a bachelor in a, uh, electrical engineering in a Seoul National University, and then did a master and PhD in a Georgia Tech in the U.S. And then, uh, yeah, my main research is uh, this uh, machine learning and uh, interactive uh, uh, visualization, and then combining them together for like, yeah, uh, effective use from the human's perspective. And then, yeah, um, yeah, this is about the brief intro about our course. So we will meet two times per week uh, here in this uh, place on Tuesday and Thursday, yeah, from uh, 10.30 to yeah, 11.45 a.m. <laughs> okay, and then, yeah, uh, my room is uh, currently in a... Uh, uh, Science Library building, which is uh, just right next to this building, but uh, I'll probably move soon to this building, maybe in a week. So the room number might change. Okay, and then, yeah. So this is a kind of a, uh, official uh, office hour, but uh, yeah, if you want to talk to me or discuss something with me, and then uh, yeah, uh, feel free to uh, let me know after the class or yeah, send me an email. Okay, and then, yeah, so for the course material and the homework postings and the submissions, yeah, we will use uh, uh, the system called Blackboard. Have you uh, logged in to this website? Okay, so <coughs> in this website, I already uh, posted uh, this course intro and uh, maybe two of our uh, first lecture materials or, or the slides. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, this course will mainly study the linear algebra. And then uh, linear algebra is uh, really a key technique in the uh, emerging uh, areas such as uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning and the statistics and so on. So, yeah, this is really, really a core and basic course for many of the um, other uh, interesting uh, yeah, areas in the computer science. So yeah, I, yeah, I hope you guys to take uh, seriously this course and then uh, yeah, study as much as possible from this class. So, so this is uh, our textbook. Yeah, so it's called uh, Linear Algebra and uh, its Applications. And it's the uh, fifth edition, I believe uh, this uh, is currently in stock in the library in this school. Yeah, and then this is an uh, uh, English book, but also I believe uh, it's a uh, translated version into Korean is also available. So yeah, you can, yeah, you can maybe uh, purchase the Korean book as well. But uh, yeah, please make sure to have this uh, fifth set edition instead of a uh, uh, fourth edition because the, um, uh, the homework problems that I will uh, give you might be a little different from, yeah, between the fourth and the uh, fifth edition. <coughs> okay, 
And then these are some uh, course schedules. And then we will, um, yeah, we will change a little bit of uh, orders from the book yeah, in our class. So yeah, um, um, yeah, so after uh, studying uh, chapter one and two, and then we will jump to uh, chapter six, and then coming back to chapter five, and then maybe a little bit of chapter seven. <coughs> and then uh, uh, during our class, yeah, uh, there is a some self uh, study kind of thing. So, <coughs> so this determinant, uh, this topic of the determinant, yeah, I ask you to study uh, this uh, uh, video lectures. Um, yeah, given by the professor, yeah, famous professor in uh, MIT, and then uh, this uh, is maybe around three hours long, uh, which is composed of two uh, lectures. Yeah, in total it's uh, three hours, so uh, yeah, uh, at some point I will give you this uh, as a homework uh, so that you can watch it and then maybe we may have some brief quiz session uh, after uh, taking this uh, video lectures. Yeah, and then, uh, <coughs> yeah, so we have other uh, just typical style of a uh, homework, uh, such as a kind of problem solving. So I will uh, give a list of a uh, homework problems, which is just an exercise problems in the book or our textbook. And then you just, uh, yeah, you just uh, uh, write it uh, uh, by your hand or you can just uh, type uh, by using computers and then submit it uh, electronically. Okay, and then, yeah, we have uh, around uh, five or six homeworks, and then also we have one midterm and one final. Yeah, this is, uh, I believe this, uh, yeah, until uh, yet uh, last year, I had a two midterm exam and then one uh, final exam. So uh, in total, I had a three exams, but uh, from this semester, I decided to have just only one yeah, midterm exam. Yeah, let's see if uh, that uh, gives a good result or not. I mean, in terms of your overall achievements in the class. Okay, and then uh, <coughs> there is a uh, class participation, uh, which takes about 5% uh, fi uh, uh, out of the 100% um, uh, uh, grading uh, amount. Yeah, so this is really, yeah, so don't take it, yeah, don't underestimate this part because, um, yeah, many of uh, the students are, uh, placed at the borderline uh, between the different grades, uh, between A plus or A and then a B plus and so on. So this uh, really changes uh, yeah, those uh, final gradings of a, uh, yeah, many students yeah, between the, yeah, around this uh, borderline. So yeah, I uh, strongly encourage you to just uh, stop me anytime uh, during our class and then uh, yeah, uh, yeah, ask me any questions. Okay, and then, <coughs> not every time, but I'll uh, often check the um, attendance. And then, uh, already counting the, the above three, uh, it will take 100%. Uh, so, uh, if you miss one class, and then uh, if you had a, uh, a perfect score of 100, uh, and then uh, you will be deducted uh, by the amount of 0.5% uh, per each missing class. So, yeah, and then <coughs> I will use, uh, uh, so I will just uh, check uh, some subset of the students for this uh, attendance. And then uh, once uh, when some of the students uh, are found to miss the class uh, previously, and then uh, I will give higher weight uh, for those students uh, to be selected uh, for this uh, attendance checking in the, uh, in the next or the future class. So if you uh, miss one class and then uh, you will be checked more frequently and then, uh, yeah, so that way, yeah, you may get uh, higher ratings on check, yeah, being checked uh, for this attendance. <coughs> Any questions so far? <coughs> okay. 
Okay, so let's start our main lectures. Okay, so uh, we start with uh, studying this uh, linear equations and linear systems or systems of linear equations. Okay, and then <coughs> let me start with the uh, really simple uh, notion of this uh, linear equation. So linear equation is probably what you've already handled in your middle or high school or even in the elementary school maybe. And so it's like it's something like this, uh, 3x plus 5y equals 2, okay? Or maybe 3x equals 5. So this kind of questions are called linear equations. And then what is a non-linear equation? Yeah, it can be, uh, for example, x squared plus 2x maybe minus 3 equals 0. So in this case, it's not called a, a linear equation because it involves yeah, this kind of second order uh, term. Okay? So in this equation, which means we have to make the left and right part to be the same, but uh, all the terms involved in this equation should have uh, at least uh, and most just a, uh, one uh, like, uh, order, uh, first order term. Okay? <coughs> so in this case, we have this uh, two variable x and y, and then yeah, it has all the order of one. So that's why we call it as a linear equation. And then what about this? Uh, 3x plus 4xy minus y equals maybe 5. So in this case, is it called a linear or non-linear equation? It's non-linear equation because <coughs> so we basically count the number of uh, variables uh, that are multiplied together for each term. So for these in terms, so this in total has one, one uh, as a uh, uh, degree or the order. But in this case, we have one variable which has the count of one as an order or the degree. And then this one also has uh, one as a, another degree, and thus in total it is multiplied together. So, yeah, it is a second order term. So it is not a linear equation. Okay. And then in these equations, yeah, there are uh, two types of numbers or elements. So in these cases, those x and y's are called our unknown or uh, variables that I already used as the term. And also we have those numbers, right? So these numbers are called, uh, yeah, when they are especially multiplied with our variables and then they are called coefficients, okay? And this one is just a constant, constant number. Okay, so, <clears throat> so what is a, a uh, yeah, what is called, what is this uh, uh, coefficient called in Korean? Okay, so <coughs> let's generalize it into this form. So <coughs> suppose we have n different variables. So uh, we can, of course, use x, y, z, w, v, and so on. But uh, we only have like 26 uh, alphabet letters, so we may easily run out because, uh, yeah, in uh, advanced like, yeah, uh, e uh, linear equations or maybe uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence problems that uses this uh, uh, linear equations mainly, yeah, that usually deals with uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, variables as well as, well as their coefficients. Okay, so <coughs> we can just enumerate uh, those variables as x1, x2 through xn. Okay, these are the variables that are unknown, and then uh, their coefficients are also uh, given as a1 through an. And then we have another constant called b, right? So we can generalize this uh, form of this uh, linear equation into this form. And then, yeah, b and the coefficient a1 through an are 
um, real or complex numbers, but they are known numbers. They are just fixed numbers. And then they can be, of course, real or complex numbers like 1 plus i or something like that. But uh, <coughs> in this class, we don't usually uh, deal with the complex number. So you don't need to worry about the complex number. And we only deal with these uh, real numbers. Okay. OK, so that was a linear equation. And then <coughs> what is a system of linear equations? Or simply, linear system. It is basically a set of multiple linear equations. So we have a, uh, uh, more than one equation. Okay? So altogether, that is called a linear system or system of linear equations. Okay? So <coughs> for example, something like this. So we have two linear equations. And here, usually given this uh, set of uh, multiple equations, uh, what we have to do is to solve uh, the um, uh, particular x and y values that satisfies both, both equations, right? So this is called a linear system. And this, uh, basically this problem uh, will be what uh, we will study for at least maybe two or three weeks from now on. Okay, so the first uh, two or three weeks, we will just uh, focus on this problem and how to systematically or how to like properly solve this problem when uh, we have a many variables or like yeah many kind of equations. Okay, so linear system is also has a uh, Korean name. So what is it called in Korean? Okay, <clears throat> and uh, of course, uh, this uh, linear system will have the solution, right? So, uh, as I mentioned, the solution is uh, the set of those uh, variable values, set of the values uh, for our unknown or variables that satisfies all these given equations. So, that is called a solution, okay? And then, <clears throat> Um, you may already have studied uh, that uh, this solution may be unique or uh, it may not be unique. So we can think about the number of possible solutions. Okay? So in this case, what is the solution for x and y? Yeah, one, one, right? So this is a one solution. Okay, this is one set of solution uh, that specifies all the given variables or unknowns, right? And then, are there any other solutions that satisfies this, uh, this, uh, this linear system? Probably not, right? So this is a, we know that this is a unique solution. So in that case, this linear system has only one solution, right? And then what are other uh, possibilities? So can some linear system, can any of these uh, linear system have a uh, more than one solution or less than one solution? Okay, so <clears throat> for example, So in this case, um, yeah, what would be our solution? So of course, x equals 1 and y equals 1 would be the solution. So this is one particular solution. But do we have any other solutions? Can anyone give uh, another solution? x equals? For example, 0, and then y equals 5 over 3. Yeah, so in this case, yeah, so if we plug in to these two equations, and then uh, it will uh, satisfy both equations. So that can be also called our solution, right? So in that case, we already uh, see another solution. Uh, so altogether, this system has uh, more than 
uh, one solution. And then uh, can we find the uh, other solutions as well? Probably yes, right? So in this case, how many solutions do we have in this case? Yeah, infinitely many solutions, right? And then, yeah, often uh, this class of uh, linear algebra, so we are basically studying a uh, linear algebra, and uh, uh, one really good trick or yeah, one kind of a uh, really uh, useful skill to, uh, to study this, yeah, this class more easily is to be able to think about it in a uh, geometric or uh, yeah, think about this kind of a, uh, characteristics or relations in a, uh, some uh, particular dimensional space. So in this case, so what I mean by that is, so we can represent uh, these equations as some line, right? So for example, 2x plus 3y equals 5. And then in this case, two point five and then like this value and then we know <coughs> this equation um, will represent this particular line, straight line, right? So all the points like this point and uh, maybe yeah one comma one and then uh, zero comma uh, three over uh, yeah uh, this number will all be our solution, right? And then uh, what if we have uh, another equation for example for x minus y equals 3 so in this case how can we draw the line so <coughs> Yep, right. So like this line. So we have minus y, uh, minus 3 as a y-intercept, and x as maybe like this number, right? And then uh, it will cross or intersect at this point. And uh, we know this uh, a particular point uh, that is on both of these uh, lines is our solution, right? So in this case, uh, yeah, we know that. Uh, this corresponds to having a unique or only one solution, okay? The count or the number of solution is one, right? And then uh, what about this case? If we had a, this, these two equations, and then the second, second equation will be exactly coinciding with the first line, right? So considering all the points that are yeah, uh, on both of these lines will be still in this line. So all the points along this line will be our solution. So that way we know that the solution, the number of solution will be infinitely many, right? And then, uh, yeah, so uh, I asked another question maybe five minutes ago. So is there any case where we have less than one solution, which means we have zero solution or no solution at all? So in that case, yeah, we know there exists such kind of case. So we have 2x plus 3y equals 5. And then for x plus 6y equals maybe 7. Wow. <laughs> OK, so <clears throat> in this case, uh, you guys know that uh, this line will be this. And then this line will be something like this. So they are parallel to each other. So in this case, they never. Uh, coincide with each other, right? So in that case, we have, we see there is a no solution at all, right? So in this uh, linear system or Yerlipang Jiangshik, so we, yeah, we understand uh, uh, three different cases are po uh, possible. So one unique solution and then no solution at all or infinitely many solutions, okay? And then uh, can we think about some other cases where we have maybe um, two solutions, not one solution or Im not infinitely many solutions, but just having a two solution. Can we have such kind of a linear system? Okay. 
<coughs> so let me give an uh, example that has just two solutions. Yeah. So <coughs> yeah, let's think about the ge yeah, this geometric kind of a case um, or their curve, and then uh, so if one equation is something like this, and then another equation is something like this, right? And then for example, like this this line will be like x minus <coughs> three and x plus one. And then this line will be uh, y equals one half times x plus maybe three. So in this case, yeah, I mean, these two um, yeah, curves are drawn in this, uh, yeah, in this form. And then we know the solution will be this one and this one. So in this case, uh, we will have exactly like two solutions and then their corresponding y values as well. Because <coughs> if this guy was maybe minus two, and then we will have the corresponding y value as for example, one. And then maybe uh, this value was four, and then this value was maybe five, and then uh, minus two comma one. And yeah, four comma five will be our two, so two of our solution, right? So in this case, uh, we see uh, the number of solutions uh, will be two, which is not infinitely many, or, but still more than one. But <coughs> This class, yeah, this class is uh, studying the linear algebra, right? And then um, we can see that this kind of equation. So this is also a system of an equations, okay? But this is not a system of linear equations because this guy is a second order uh, equation, right? So if we allow this uh, second or more uh, larger uh, orders of these equations, and then uh, this um, lines will be some curved, yeah, curved lines, right? It is possible, but uh, if we consider only the linear uh, equations, then all the lines um, that are represented by the linear equations will be just a straight line, right? Just straight line. And then if we think about these two or more straight lines, they will be coinciding at only one point, <coughs> but they cannot like, yeah, once they meet or here, and then they will be far away from each other, right? Away from uh, uh, getting away from this point, right? So it cannot be bent like this and then having another solution, right? So that way, yeah, we cannot have like maybe two or three or finite number of solutions in the case of linear systems, okay? So overall, <coughs> I mean, yeah, it, uh, to summarize, uh, there are three possible cases of, yeah, in terms of the number of solutions. Only one or unique solution or no solutions at all and infinitely many solutions, okay? So these three cases are, yeah, yeah, uh, the um, important cases that we will consider in, yeah, in this class. <coughs> okay, so let's get back to this slide. And so <coughs> we understand uh, what is the solution. And then now we can understand the solution set, which means, yeah, which contains all the possible solutions, okay? So in this case, we will have only one unique solution, but if we have these uh, coinciding lines and then our solution set that contains all the possible solutions, and then this solution set will have infinitely many elements, okay? So what is set in Korean? Set. 네, 집합이죠. 집합. <웃음> yeah, so this is a uh, yeah, a little bit off topic, but uh, what is the difference between set and list? <웃음> or maybe I think it's uh, it can be 
uh, yeah, it can have the same meaning as an array, but what is the difference between them? Yeah, right. List as a sequence, or yeah, they are multiple elements, but their orderings matter. But in the case of set, their ordering doesn't matter. So, like, you know, this set is exactly the same as like this set, right? But in the case of an array or list, so their orders are, yeah, orders are, yeah. If the orders are different, and then they are different arrays. Okay, <clears throat> so given a linear system, and then we can think of this a solution set that contains all the possible solutions, and then let's think about another linear system, okay? Another linear system. So for example, so we had x plus 2y equals 3, 2x minus y equals 1. So this is a one system. And then let's think about another system that has like this. So these two are two different linear systems, but we know that these two will have exactly the same, exactly the same solution set, right? So you guys know that uh, yeah, if we just multiply by two, and then we can simply obtain this equation, one of these uh, different equations in the other linear system, right? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if, yeah, given these uh, multiple linear systems, and then if these uh, systems have the exact same solution set, and then those two linear systems are called equivalent, okay? Equivalent. So what is, uh, what is it called in Korean? 네? 상등? 네, 뭐 그런 거 있죠? 상등, 뭐 동치, 뭐다 비슷한 얘기죠. Okay. So yeah, so you guys know that uh, the, yeah, the, no, the meaning of the uh, equivalence between the linear system, okay? And then why do we consider this uh, equivalent linear systems? Yeah, it is because given one linear system, we keep changing this linear system into simpler and simpler form of a linear system so that we can easily obtain the solution, okay? So in this case, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, if, uh, if uh, some of you are really, 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 really smart and then uh, yes, uh, that students should be able to give the answer maybe immediately, maybe like the solution would be this, right? But how about this? I'm going to give you another linear system of this, okay? So this is a, another linear system, which is a different, but yeah, in this form, we can just easily uh, see the solution, right? And so <coughs> those two linear systems are equivalent. So um, yeah, what we will learn maybe uh, in the next few classes uh, will be how to change this a little bit complicated form of a linear systems into this simpler form of linear systems, okay? And then, uh, yeah, how can we change this guy into this form? Or in other words, how do we solve uh, this linear systems uh, from the experiences in uh, our middle school or high school? So there were a few different methods to solve this, this linear system. What were they? Multiplying. Ne? Multiplying. Multiplying? Yeah, right. And then, yeah, in Korean, uh, yeah, I, I remember like three different methods of solving a linear system. Or, what was that? What was the other one? Yeah. What was it? Dong Dong Chip Bob, you don't go so Bob. Okay, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly either. <clears throat> but you guys know what these two are, right? 
So what about this guy? What about this guy? If we had like this equation, and then we pick up maybe one of these equations, and then change it as this form. So we leave one variable on the left, and then we move all the term, all the other terms on, uh, into the right. And then like this. And then we just plug this into the other equations, right? And then <coughs> uh, this first equation will now involve only one variable of an x because we just uh, plugged y uh, in terms of the um, uh, variable, the other variables. So we basically removed this variable for y, right? And similarly, yeah, so this was called the, uh, this day pop. And uh, what about this gagan pop? So we just consider these two equations and then maybe pick up one particular variable to remove. And then maybe we just uh, multiply the first equation by two, for example. And then we obtain this equation and then two x minus y equals one. And then what do we do? We just subtract them. And then we obtain five y equals five, right? So that was, yeah. That was called a gagam pop, or yeah, gagam means just adding or subtracting. And what do we add or subtract? We are just adding or subtracting between the equations, okay? And then before adding or uh, subtracting one equations to with the other, we just um, uh, mo uh, uh, we just do some proper multiplication so that uh, uh, one particular variables can be removed. So we just didn't um, add or multiply these two equations. Before them, before doing so, we uh, multiply the first equation by two because we want to remove this first variable by just adding or subtracting these um, equations, right? Okay, so that was this Kagan uh, Bob. And then <clears throat> in this class, we will just focus on this Kagan Bob. Okay, and then, <clears throat> yeah, we will just uh, study how to do this Gaganpo more systematically when having really uh, many number of variables and many uh, number of equations, okay? So, uh, by systematically, I mean that we will uh, follow a particular order of removing the variables or uh, maybe subtracting or adding um, yeah, adding the equations, okay? So we will uh, study uh, those systematic orders so that we can handle really a large number of uh, yeah, variables and uh, equations. Okay, <clears throat> so that was a little bit of a preview of our class. Okay, and then get back, getting back to this linear equation. Yeah, and linear system, we know uh, we have a no, either no solution or exactly one unique solution or infinitely many solution. And there are no other cases, right? And then, uh, yeah, let's study another term called consistency of this uh, linear system or inconsistency. So given a linear system, which is composed of multiple equations. So we are given a multiple equation and then we try to find the solution that uh, satisfies all these equations, right? And then <clears throat> if the, if the um, linear system has the solution, okay, has at least one solution, and in that case, the uh, linear system is called a consistent. And what is the corresponding cases of having at least one solution? And that is corresponding to these two cases, either unique solution or infinitely many solution. And then, yeah, uh, the, the system, the solution of a system is actually exist is uh, is actually existing. So in that case, uh, the system is cons yeah, called a consistent. And then if the solution has no solution at all, and then the system is called a inconsistent. Okay. So what is this uh, meaning of this uh, consistent in Korean? Consistent. What is the meaning? Okay. 뭐 한글 번역이 뭐죠? 네. 컨시스턴트. 아, 얘는 뭐 
굉장히 컨시스턴트한 사람인 것 같애라고 하면 뭔가 뭔가 좀 그런 거 있잖아요. 일관된 사람. 네? 좀 자기 주관이 쭉 일관되고 뭐 이런 거. 인컨시스턴트한 건 얘는 뭐 이럴 땐 이랬다가 저럴 땐 저랬다가 하는 거. 이런 게 이제 인컨시스턴트한 거죠. <웃음> so, 그, 그, 어, 그래서 이제 컨시스턴트라는 거는 이제 어떤 시스템이 각 이제 이퀀션마다 모두 다 만족을 해야 되는 어떤 솔루션을 찾아야 되는 거잖아요. 그러니까 뭔가 얘네들 하나하나 이퀀션들이 뭔가 일관된 어떤 그러니까 모두를 다 만족하는 뭔가 일관된 어떤 솔루션이 있다는 뜻이고 얘는 이 소리를 하고 있고 이 이퀀션은 저 소리를 하고 있어서 당초에 얘네 둘을 다 만족을 할 수가 없어요. 그러면 이, 이 리니얼 시스템 혹은 연립방 형식이 이제 일관되지 않다, 않다 혹은 이제 인컨시스턴트 하다라고 얘기를 하는 거예요. Okay, so <웃음> if uh, all these equations uh, shares a one, at least one common solution, and then uh, yeah, we can just consider it as a consistent cases among all these equations because they are yeah, uh, yeah, having a one common solution. Okay, <웃음> and then now let's uh, handle this matrix. Okay, matrix. So what is Called, yeah, what is this matrix called in Korean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in this class, yeah, this matrix is the main, yeah, main ingredient that uh, we handle in, uh, in this class throughout the semester. And this matrix is simply this kind of two dimensional array or list of the numbers. Okay? So, we have these two axes. Where all, uh, all these numbers are positioned or placed. Okay. So this one is yeah can be viewed as a two-dimensional array. Okay. Okay. And then uh, how do we, yeah how do we relate this matrix with our uh, linear system? Suppose we are given these three equations in our linear system. And then we have a three variable here in this case, and then this in this case uh, I can just uh, write it in this form, right? And then once we write uh, our equations in this form, and then we just collect all the coefficients from each of these equations, and then just to form this matrix. For example, so we have one here, and uh, we have these uh, coefficients, right? And then we just simply bring all these coefficients and then form this particular matrix. Okay? So this is called a coefficient matrix because we collected all the coefficient, matrix, uh, coefficient values. <coughs> and then uh, we can think about another matrix called augmented matrix. Okay? Augmented matrix. Uh, yeah, augmented matrix is really a simple extension from this coefficient matrix. So in these equations, uh, <coughs> the known numbers, so num uh, numbers are given in this position of coefficients and, and also we are given the numbers in this uh, constant part on the right hand side, right? So they are not associated with the variables as a product form, they are just no uh, given as a numbers, right? So that we can uh, satisfy the left hand side to be the same as the right hand side numbers, okay? And then those constant values can be also brought into our matrix. So we just simply bring all these numbers into this right uh, side of our uh, matrix, okay? So that way we can form this, okay? So this is called the augmented matrix because we augmented, so we are augmenting this coefficient by this constant, by just adding it as another column on the right, right? It's quite simple, right? <coughs> okay, and then now we can think about the size of the matrix, okay, size of the matrix. So, Let's just forget about the linear system and then just consider this kind of matrix. I just gave you this matrix and then let's think about the size of it. So what is the size of this matrix? So this has two horizontal like array of numbers, right? And then three vertical array of the numbers. So this 
has the size of 2 by 3. Okay. Yeah, and then so this will have 3 by 2 as a matrix size, right? And then what about it? What about this case? So this one is usually considered, uh, this one is not usually considered as a matrix. So that is called what? So this is basically a one dimensional array of the numbers. So what is it called? What are you? 행렬 말고 또뭐 있죠? 벡터? 벡터? 벡터 배웠죠? 고등학교 때 배웠죠? 벡터? 벡터 안 배웠어요? 혹시? 이게 뭐가 교과 과정이 뭐가 뭐 벡터나 뭐 이런 거다뭐 없앤다 그래갖고 그런 게 얼마 전에 뉴스에 났던데 혹시 배웠죠? 다? 벡터? So, <웃음> 그, 저기, 그런 거, 그, 그런 거 배웠어요? 회전이도? 예전 교육 과정. 코사사코 뭐 이런 거안 배웠어요? 안 배웠어요? 나라가 어떻게 되려 이제 큰일이네. <웃음> okay, so yeah, this is a uh, just basically a one-dimensional array of the numbers. So that is called a vector, right? So matrix is a two-dimensional array, and then <웃음> one-dimensional array is called a vector. But <웃음> we can still view it as a matrix. And then what is the size of a matrix? Something like this. It has like three horizontal array of the numbers, right? And then only one vertical array of the numbers. So three by one. So we can view it as a matrix of having the size of three by one. Okay. And then we can also think about this one, two, three. And then this one is uh, having the size of one by three, right? And then <coughs> So um, yeah, when calling them as a vector, we can yeah we call the first one, this uh, vertical one, as which vector? So that is called a sum vector, and this one is has another name of something vector. Hang vector. Hang vector vector. So so which one is the hang vector? We take go we go. Bottom. Yeah, right. Hang. Yeah, hang. Your. What is the uh, English name of a hang? Row. Row, right. Row vector. And then this one is column uh, vector. Okay. Okay. And so, so, yeah. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I also studied the, this linear algebra maybe in the third year in my undergrad school. Yeah, it's more than uh, maybe, yeah, it's around 20 years ago. Yeah, and then uh, at that time I did, I did really bad in this course. And then uh, somehow, uh, yeah, I kind of uh, came to uh, do some major, yeah, uh, yeah, my kind of re uh, main research areas is uh, heavily related to this uh, linear algebra. So I didn't expect that uh, when I did uh, uh, undergrad. But anyways, at that mo yeah, at that time I was still confused uh, which one was a column or which one is a row vector. Okay, and so <coughs> let's just give some example so that. Uh, you can avoid uh, this kind of confusion between columns and rows. So let's uh, yeah, think about the column or search for this uh, keyword of column. Yeah, so <coughs> yeah, column has a uh, yeah, meaning of this uh, kind of pillar, okay? Pillar, 그러니까 기둥 같은 게 column이에요. 네. So all this kind of pillar uh, will be just a vertical, right? So column vector will be just a vertical vector, <coughs> okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now uh, you guys know how to yeah consider or yeah how to yeah uh, view the size of the matrix and then uh, in a general form, uh, if we think about this M by N matrix, okay, and then it means M is the number of rows or horizontal vectors. 
right? So if we consider like five by two uh, matrices, and then we have these five rows, and then we have these two columns, right? Okay, so, and then, uh, yeah, uh, considering this, the size of the matrix uh, in the context of coefficient matrix and augmented matrix will be really, really important, okay? So that's why we consider this the size of the matrix in this uh, uh, solving a linear system. <coughs> okay, so I, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give just an uh, explanation about it anyway, so yeah. Um, so we are interested in uh, determining the number of solutions given our linear system. And then we, yeah, we usually know uh, or we usually consider the number of variables and number of equations, okay? So <clears throat> in these cases of linear system, uh, how many variables do we have? We have two variables and how many equations do we have? We have two equations, right? So usually, so the number of uh, variables are some kind of uh, freedom or the amount of the freedom that we have, right? So we can just uh, control or like freely change those values of variables. So we have two kind of controlling now, right? And then how many uh, constraints or uh, yeah how, yeah, how many kind of equations uh, should we satisfy? So we have to satisfy two kind of different requirements or equations, right? And then we have two kind of degree of freedom or two kind of number of freedom kind of uh, thing. And then we have two requirements to satisfy. So these, if these two numbers are uh, matching and then, yeah, we usually uh, know that uh, the system will have only one unique solution, right? All, yeah. It is not always the case, right? So for example, like, uh, yeah, so, <coughs> yeah, even when we have like two different equations and two variables, uh, sometimes we may have infinitely many solution uh, when these two equations are exactly coinciding with each other. And then uh, uh, we know uh, there might be no solutions, even when the same number of variables and equations are given, right? But usually we know the number of equations are the same as the number of variables, and then usually we will have only one solution. And then what about the, uh, the other cases where we have more variables than equations? So we have maybe three equations, and then maybe uh, five variables. And then we have like uh, more freedom than the number of requirements to satisfy, right? In that case, we usually know that the number of solution will be what? <clears throat> infinitely many because we have like uh, more freedom than the the amount of uh, the number of requirement to satisfy right and then the other cases uh, where we have yeah maybe two variables but we have infinitely many uh, no two variables and then maybe we have five uh, equations and then there are too many requirements to satisfy by using only two control knob or two like number of freedoms right so in this case uh, we usually have, uh, we see, uh, in that case, usually we have no solutions at all, right? So that uh, compare, yeah, that process of comparing between the number of equations and number of variables can be translated into just, yeah, just comparing this m by n in our coefficient matrix, okay? So let's look at this example. So let's just uh, forget about the augmented matrix, but just focus on this uh, coefficient matrix. <coughs> and then, <coughs> so we know these three rows are there in this matrix. So what is the number of rows in this linear system? It is the same as the number of equations, right? And then what about the number of columns in our matrix? which corresponds to n in m by n matrix. So in that case, it is corresponding to the number of variables, right? <coughs> okay, so <coughs> I'm gonna give you just like this, yeah, really short and fat matrix, uh, which is a coefficient matrix from some linear system. And in that case, uh, you can just expect that this one will have infinitely many solution or no solution. 
Yeah, it will have infinitely many solutions. It is not always the case, but uh, usually it will be like that because we will have many number of variables, more number of variables than the equation, right? And then uh, what about this? So in this case, uh, if the coefficient matrix are like that, and then yeah, we we usually have no solutions at all, right? Okay, and then maybe in the first months, uh, I mean, uh, over the over the next maybe uh, three four weeks, uh, if we find that our uh, yeah, our linear system has no solution. And then uh, that will be your kind of answer for your maybe homework or exam, okay? So it will be just enough to say that, okay, so in this uh, equation, uh, yeah, I found that there is no solutions at all, okay? But uh, maybe in the last, yeah, in the last months, uh, towards the end of the semester, and then uh, we, sh we will uh, learn or study how to solve this uh, like uh, linear system where, they, there is, where there is no solutions at all. Okay, so in that case, uh, we consider kind of an approximate solution, approximate solution. And that kind of approx yeah, uh, computing or solving this uh, approximate solution, yeah, so that is really in the heart of like many of these uh, artificial intelligence problems or machine learning problems, okay? So I will give you just a simple example of this uh, solving approximately the system of linear, yes, yeah, system of linear equations in the context of maybe machine learning or artificial intelligence problems. So we want to kind of predict a person's height from a person's weight. So I give you the person's information of uh, having the weight of maybe 70 kilogram. And then uh, yeah, I ask you to predict uh, that person's height. Okay, and in that case, <coughs> yeah, in machine learning or artificial intelligence problems, uh, we usually consider the training data, training data, or uh, we uh, are given a set of examples. Okay, so suppose you run a hospital, for example, and then you collected a person's height and weight, okay, for maybe a hundred people's height and weight information, and then maybe 70 kilograms person had maybe a height of 170 centimeter and then maybe 85 and then 180 and then maybe uh, 60 and then yeah this guy was maybe 175 okay and then <clears throat> how do you predict given this data and then uh, your main job or your prediction task will be okay so I will give you the person of maybe 65 kilogram and what will be the um, height so what is your prediction in this case, okay? So in this case, they are just converted into a set of linear systems. So how? Yes, yeah, so let's think about this case. So 70 times maybe A plus B equals 170. So we basically consider the model or prediction model where we have like this y equals, so this is y, or height, height equals <coughs> uh, weight times a plus p. We just consider this kind of yeah, linear equation, okay? So in this case, we can consider this equation from the first person example, right? Okay, and then 85 a plus b equals 180 and 60 a plus B equals 175, okay? Okay, so suddenly we see a linear system, and then how many variables here in this case? So what is the unknown? A and B, so we have two unknowns, right? And then how many exam uh, equations do we have? Three, right? So probably there will be no solution uh, that satisfies uh, all these equations, right? So even though I haven't solved this equation exactly, but yeah, we kind of yeah, expect or guess that it's likely that uh, this one will have no solution at all, right? And then uh, uh, in, at that moment, uh, would you give up uh, just uh, solving this problem? Or you can just try your best to just like 
best approximate, yeah, uh, solve these equations uh, with your best, I mean, in terms of an approximation sense. <coughs> so, yeah, so maybe it's like, suppose A was 2 and B was maybe <coughs> 30, okay? So let's consider uh, one case of, yeah, uh, A and B uh, values. And then maybe, um, yeah, maybe 1 and B equals 95, okay? So I, I gave you just uh, two different uh, examples of possible solution, right? And then I got this solution by just uh, exactly uh, matching or uh, satisfying this equation. But if you plug these solutions into these, and then we will see that these are not satisfied, right? And then we can think about how much it is not satisfied, right? So by that I mean is, so if we plug this in and then 170 plus 30 will give you 200. So in this case, um, you would predict uh, given a 85 kilograms person, you would predict that person's height as 200 meter. No, 200 centi centimeter, okay? So it is, it is too much, right? And then what is the error? So that uh, person's uh, height was actually 180. And then you kind of overestimated uh, by the amount of 20 centimeters, right? So that will be considered as your error, right? <coughs> and then, uh, yeah, in this case, uh, it was perfectly satisfied. And then in the second equations, you, cons uh, you uh, incurred, you caused like the error of 20 centimeters. And then what about this uh, uh, third equation? 120 plus, yeah. It is uh, actually underestimating the person's height as 150 in this case, right? And then in this case, maybe minus uh, 25 centimeter or something like that. And then we can all together maybe uh, sum these uh, absolute uh, difference between our prediction and the actual values. And then this guy, yeah had maybe, yeah, let's consider the um, absolute value, and then this solution will have the score of minus 45, right? So this solution will have, uh, in total, uh, the amount of 45 centimeters of an error given our training data, right? And then we can also think about this case as well. So in this case, I just uh, set it as, um, yeah, uh, by satisfying the first equation, uh, no, no, the second equation, right? So in the case of second equation, it will be perfectly matching, right? But what about the first equation? So it is 7 plus 95 and then 165, and then it had, like, between these two, we had a 5 centimeters of an error, and then uh, if we plug in this into this uh, third equation, and then 60 plus 155, and then 20, maybe, Am I correct, right? Okay, and then if we consider the, uh, the absolute difference or absolute errors, so it is like minus 25. Yeah, let's just uh, think about the uh, positive values as an amount of an error. So the first solution will have in total 45 uh, amount of an error, and then the second solution will have 25 amount of an error, right? So which one would you choose? The second one, because it gave a, uh, in total, the, the smaller number, smaller amount of an error, right? So in that case, I only consider the, these two different, uh, two different cases. And then what will be your best value of an A and B that will minimize that kind of an error, okay? So I just consider two specific case, but what if we consider all the possible cases and can we obtain the best solution? that has the best error value or the minimum error value, right? So that way we can kind of solve these equations approximately and that solution can be actually used very, very usefully for predicting these uh, unseen data and their uh, 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 prediction of an height, okay? So if we simply change your data and then it can be like height, yeah, so in this case, uh, we are only giving uh, one particular type of an information of an weight, okay? But uh, we can think of the person's information, I mean the collected person's information as maybe high, uh, weight and maybe blood type and uh, age. 
and the location of your residence, uh, where you are living, right? All these information are, uh, yeah, are working or playing a role of a particular variable, and then we will have a multiple variable. And then, in this case, we only collected the three people, right? So what if we collected maybe uh, maybe uh, millions of people, and then we consider the millions of equations, right? And in that case, uh, how can we solve this problem uh, with the best approximation? And then also, if we change the target variable, so th in this case, we are just predicting a, uh, predicting a person's height, right? And then let's just simply change that value as a maybe a person's life expectancy. So how long will you live? Okay, how long will you live? Right? In that case, suddenly this prediction problem uh, has really an uh, really an uh, importance, right? Because it will predict how long you will live, right? Based on your kind of uh, input information, right? And then also it can be, uh, yeah. For example, if we change or replace this variable with some of maybe, uh, per, uh, yeah, whether you will have a particular uh, disease, uh, whether you will have a uh, diabetes, diabetes, what is it? Diabetes, 당뇨병. And in that case, our, uh, in our example, okay, so in this case of person, uh, this uh, person had a uh, disease of uh, diabetes, and then we represent it as one. And then if a particular person had no diabetes, and then we can represent it as zero, right? Just simply one meaning the having a diabetes and zero uh, corresponding to uh, non-diabetes. And then simply we can yeah, uh, formulate all these interesting uh, prediction problems or machine learning problems as a, this kind of linear systems, okay? So that way this kind of uh, thing that we learn is really, really important. Okay, so towards the end of the class, so we will uh, study how to approximately solve or how to obtain or compute the best solution in terms of this uh, minimization of the total errors. Okay, so it's maybe three minutes or four minutes left and uh, since it's the first class. So I'm going to give you a little bit more break. So let's stop here and then I'll continue uh, this Thursday at 10.30. Thank you very much.